Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison. Got another great one today. Uh, me and my co-host, Reed, we talk about Tennessee basketball team, how they did in the SEC tournament, uh, their NCAA tournament bid, what we think their chances are. Uh, we also reminisce about some of my playing days, talk about rush props, and unfortunately, some of the Tennessee football players arrested over this uh, past week. But hopes are always high. So, let's start the show. Snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no sir Ree. No sir Ree. Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. Looks, loads up, fires long for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught on Tennessee. Tennessee wins! by Tennessee, Jawan Jennings. Jennings makes the catch in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Ball down at the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. What did he do? All he did was score. Joey Pence. Touchdown on play number one. Before we get into the show, just got to shout out our sponsor at betonline.ag. So NBA is in full swing. College basketball is about to hit some March Madness, get into the tournament. So the only place to go and bet on these kind of sports is BetOnline. Um, you know, now there is a $100,000 Bracket Madness Contest at Bet Online. It is the, the spot for bracketology everything. Um, you know, you're going to get updated scores, uh, you know, lines, what it, odds, everything that that's going to have to do with the uh, the March Madness tournament. So uh, it's the best, best way to place all your bets. So head to uh, the website, betonline.ag, or... Use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, we're going to start the show now. Uh, Got my uh, friend and co host, Reed, here with me. Um, For everyone uh, watching, I am drinking a Diet Coke as we speak, so I'm all hopped up on that. Uh, please don't judge me. It's what my mom drank when I was a kid. So I got, I got addicted to it. Uh, it is, my <laughs> soda. <laughs> it is my soda of choice. Um, but today's gonna be a fun one. How are you doing, Reed? What's, what's going on, my man? I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm excited to talk with you. Uh, excited to, uh, man, that first one was, was a blast. So I'm kind of like ready to jump back into it. I just downed my smoothie for dinner no big go. deal it's all about the gains getting freaking huge man bro i'm 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 trying to play nose tackle for <laughs> coach Heifel. i'm sure he I'm would gonna, love to have you. you you know you pull your albert haynesworth i know that was they, a, uh, one of your favorite titans back in the day okay first off no i don't like albert haynesworth second off <laughs> second off just call me pot roast terrence knight <laughs> there you go <laughs> Yes. Yes. Um, I will give you a critique though, Reed. Um, sure. So my mom listened to the show and said, he talks too much. You need to talk more. Told me that. And I go, mom, don't you think you're a little biased that I'm your son and you just want to hear me talk more? She's like, no, that can't be it. <laughs> well, the funny thing is after I listened back to the first one, I said the exact same thing. I said, Hey bro, like, these people don't know who I am. They want to listen to you. They don't want to listen to me. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess that's true, but who knows? You might become a fan favorite. Hey, we'll, we'll see about that. Don't sell yourself short. All right. You're a funny dude. That's why I have you on the show. There we go. There we go. Uh, all right. So let's jump into actual talking points. Um, I wish I could be able to change the name every season with the different sports teams and just, you know, it's believe in Tennessee football until we lose five games, and then it's believe in Tennessee basketball until we lose eight games, and then it's believe in Tennessee baseball, and I can just move through the seasons. Um, but base or basketball update, 
we lose an SC tournament. Everyone knows, obviously. We get uh, okay, probably the actually the worst bid we put could have possibly gotten in the NCAA tournament. Uh, but let's recap the SEC SEC tournament. Um, the Florida and Alabama games. I like the fact that we were able to beat Florida twice because it was our last regular season game. And then going into that one, I feel like that's a very tough thing to do is to beat a team twice. So it was good to see. Uh, I thought the Alabama game, you know, that run, that 14 point run that Alabama went on, we just seemed so lackadaisical. Like, oh, we have the lead. We don't need to worry about this anymore. We don't really need to play defense anymore. And we were just letting guys go to the basket. It, I mean, it was easy layups. It wasn't like they were draining threes. It wasn't the, you know, the Warriors out there. It was easy layups, getting to the basket over and over. And my thought process is, and it's probably the football player in me, is, hey, contest. Go up and foul a dude. Am I wrong for saying that? No, I, no, I, I agree. I agree. First off, I'm just – you're just throwing a wrench in, in, in the whole thing. I'm sitting here worried about talking about a basketball game, and now I'm worried about Miss Kerbison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's coming for you, Bacon. She's yeah. For you. Well, I guess uh, I guess this the first that was my first podcast, and this is my last one. So <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you no, didn't make uh, the pass the mom approval. I know, I know. Well, it's funny that she and I both said that, but anyways. Um, I actually a thousand percent agree with you. I, as a betting man, I know that you don't really like to bet too much, but I like to partake in it. I, I really wanted to take Florida. Um, Use our sponsors, betonline.ag. Correct. Betonline.ag. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby. I actually started using them just because of listening to you. I, I got to use them and, you know, everybody else I can get. But, um, no, yeah, so I was, like, pretty nervous. I was like, it's just – I guess it's an old sports cliche, like it's tough to be a good team twice or whatever. But I think just more about the basketball team being inconsistent. I was like, hey, we beat them once, so I guess it's time for us to lose. Um, so I was very, very happy with how we played against Florida. Um, I actually didn't bet. I, I, I thought about betting for Florida just to, like – because usually if I bet on the other team, Tennessee wins, so – and I am superstitious, so I you're guess great, I should have You're bet. a great jinx for us. I should have bet on Bama, but um, no, Florida, I thought we played great. I loved the tempo. Uh, I loved our defense. I thought we played well. Um, obviously, the Fulkerson thing was – I mean, that's just that just sucks. Like, I mean, it just pisses me off. Um, I mean, I, I, I physically see that, and I just want to fight that guy. Like, it's just like, you know, I want – I. I mean, I want yeah, I feel like I, I I just feel like it's such a different world in basketball. Like, I, yeah, I feel like I would start swinging on him immediately. Right. But right. I, I don't know if that's just like the football player in me. I, I mean, many, many of times, like been in fights before at practice, uh, you know, almost fights and games. But you got to hold yourself back just to help your team. Um, but man, he decked him and that eye looked horrible. During the game. It looked awful. And, and yeah, it's such a fine line because like if you and I are on our team together and somebody does that to you, I'm coming up swinging on them because it's like, I got to take care, like take up for my, for my teammate and, or, or good friend. If some of those guys are really good friends, but then it's like, you do have to be smart. You can't get yourself kicked out of the game. So it's just that fine line. Cause then, I don't want Fulkerson to watch that back and be like, dang, like <laughs> no one even shoved the guy, like help a boy out. Like so, y'all didn't even come help me, bro. No, I just got like, knocked pa- out. Yeah, Pawns like walked up and just tried to like, you know, like, you know, chest to chest with the guy. But I mean, come on now. Like, so anyways, I will say this. Um, I don't, I haven't seen anything and I haven't actively looked for it. But that guy should be suspended either by the SEC, the NCAA, or by Florida, or by Florida basketball. I don't care. He, he should be suspended or, or something should happen. You can't go around giving people facial fractures and, and just being it being okay. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think it was uh, it, it was the fact that he, like, did it twice. He hit him with yeah. one elbow and then came back around and hit him with the other one. Like, 
purposely trying to hit him in the face, trying to do something to him. And I feel like it's just like every basketball team, and I feel like this is good for soccer, and it's something that hockey has that they don't, is a freaking enforcer. I've told, right. I've joked with people before, like, I will come out for the soccer team and I'll give you five minutes of full speed sprints and I will knock somebody out. Right. Yeah. And if, if you're telling me that won't help the team at all, I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of those guys in, in, in basketball that they're like, he's coming in, he's getting some, some cheapy fouls. Like, he's going to let you know, like, hey, if you drive in the lane, there's going to be somebody there, but, um, but really Fulkerson's our main big guy, our main down low player. So, you know, if Pons goes out, then we're, we're rocking with, uh, some, some young guys. Um, but, but yeah, I just hope Florida does something to that guy and then to the Bama game. I loved how we played. I mean, that first half it, uh, and I, you know, it's just the, being a Tennessee fan. I'm like, all right, when's it going to happen? It's like when I play. It's like when I play golf, and I love that you play golf now. But it's like I hit like three good shots in a row, and I'm not happy. I'm like, okay, well, when's it coming? When am I going to top one? You know, when am I going to raise up? When am I going to slice one? So, as a as a Tennessee fan, I'm just watching the game. I'm like, well, I'm just praying that we get to three minutes left and we still have a four to seven point lead, because then it, it really puts the pressure on Bama. But um, I pulled up some stats just just talking about it, looking at back over it because I got really frustrated with a spurt in the first half where we had some sloppy turnovers, and I was trying to see and, and honestly it was a very even game. It was we had 19 turnovers, they had 17. We had 18 fouls, they had 17 fouls. Um, and then the biggest pain here to see is largest lead. Our largest lead was 15. And that's just heartbreaking because it's like you get a 15 point lead in the second half, you should be able to to hold on. But give that's kudos insane. to give kudos to Bama. They're they're a good basketball team. I'm happy with how we played. I would have. I mean, I don't I don't think anyone probably feels worse than Devonte Gaines comes in, makes a unbelievable defensive play. That's when I was like, we got this. Like, come on, buddy. Like one, I just need one. Then he bricks both of them, and I'm like, well. <laughs> back, back to Tennessee sports. Pack it up, baby. Pack it up. No, I think uh I think I would say my golf game is the opposite of yours, where I'm just like waiting for the one good golf shot that I have in the day. Like, okay, when's it coming that it's gonna give me enough life to come back and do this again? Um, so not I've never I don't think I've hit three good shots in a row. So kudos <laughs> to you. Um, but I would agree. I think I think the turnovers were huge. I, I always get nervous when Springer gets the ball for some reason. I just feel like he's going to lose it. He's, I feel like he's I'm a opposite. sporadic. I'm You're opposite. opposite? I'm, I'm, Keon, I'm Keon Johnson. You don't like it when Keon gets it. He's the one that makes me nervous. Okay. I mean, you know, young guys, it'll right. happen. Uh, I think Fulkerson probably would have made a big difference in that game, especially like I was saying earlier with, them getting to the paint, getting to the basket very easily, just having a bigger man in there. And, you know, Gaines had to come in because we needed defenders because Viscovi was getting eaten alive out there, and they realized it. Uh, and the fact that we were switching, why would you switch and put Viscovi on a big man uh, like they did a few times? And I thought Gaines did a great job. Honestly, when I think about it, I think it was a good decision by Barnes. I think it's what he had to do. I would not, I would not hold that against him and say, you know, that's the reason why we lost the game because he brought the kid in and he's cold and he's, you know, hasn't played for two and a half hours. But he came in to make a defensive stop, to be a defender, and he did his job. He did his job very well. It just so happened that the refs called a foul, which really wasn't even a foul if you look at it, and he had to shoot free throws. Now, if you're a collegiate basketball player, you should be better than 56% from free throws, but, you know, that's not what he's there for. That's all I'm saying. He was not there for those free throws. Agreed. Let me, let me ask you this. Have you – did you ever have a moment, and I think I know what you'll say, 
on the embarrassed part, but did you ever have a part where you just felt totally embarrassed, like you let the team down, like Gaines did? And and did you ever have a a moment where you knew someone was getting exposed, like the Scoby? And it's like, how does that feel? Because it's like that's on the coach to get it changed, but you probably also feel bad for a teammate. So, um, I would say that. I- there's times of both. Uh, the first play that I got in uh, my redshirt sophomore year was against Florida because Juwan James helmet c- came off. I go out there. It is second and three. And we're, you know, we're doing a uh, inside zone to the left. I'm on the back side. I'm at right guard. We're doing inside zone to the left. I jump off sides. And jitters, you know, being a Knoxville native playing against Florida and their amazing defensive line that they always have, uh, a center in James Stone that I hadn't practiced with at all. And I jump off sides. It uh, moves it to, oh, it was actually third down and it moves it to third. Nice. Eight. Yeah, exactly. Nice it, it, so much worse. It moves it to third and eight. I try <laughs> it's so embarrassing, man. So I jump off sides, moves to the third and eight. I try and run off the field as to say, like, okay, Jawan can come back in now. I suck. I'm the worst human ever. And they're like, no, you have to stay out there. You haven't played a play yet. Like he hasn't been out for a single play yet. Right. I had to stay out there for third and eight. We pass the ball. Tyler Bray throws like a jump ball to Justin Hunter. It's incomplete but I literally ruined the drive and I felt so horrible after that. I felt like I was a reason that we lost. Like I lost us momentum that we had or that we could have had, but I mean, honestly, we lost by like 20 points. So is that the game where we had me. game day? Is that the game where we had game day here? And it, we were like number 23, they were like 12 and Trey Burton went off for them. Um, Yes. Yeah. Yes, it it was. It was that game. Uh, Yeah, because I'm trying to, like, think back, like, when we played him at home and away and at home and away. Yeah. Yeah, it was was that game, the the big one. So, so I was in the stands – I obviously see 77 come in and your boy is going nuts. And I'm like, let's go. We're about to eat. I'm like, come on. and you know, I'm getting fired up. I'm like, Hey, 77, you know him? Yeah. That's my best friend. And then like, you get called off sides and I'm like, God, he always sucked. He, he was garbage at Catholic too. No, but, um, but I, I do remember that game and that game was so, so hype. But I was about to say, um, I forget what his first name was, but we had a corner named Teague. I think he was an athlete that came in. They bumped in between uh, receiver and corner. And I can promise you, Toast Teague was the reason that we were getting smoked. It wasn't because you you jumped on sides. I know. So, There's a lot of other stuff that happens in the game. No, I know. I know. I know. I would say um, you, the other question you asked, uh, did you ever feel like I saw someone that was like Fiscovi? Um I wouldn't say a particular person, but there was definitely times where the defense was just like letting up scores. And like my thought process was like, they, they don't have a shot. Like they literally don't have a chance to stop them. Um, I think it was E-Man, which is so fitting. Emmanuel Mosley just signed like a $10 yeah. million dollar contract. But yeah, good player. I think, it was, I think it was E-Man when we were playing Bowling Green got beat like three or four times by this white dude, just deep balls. Oh, yes. And they yeah. kept – they just kept scoring. Obviously, our offense was out of this world that year, and we just yeah. kept scoring too. Uh, so, it didn't, you know, turn out to be anything. But I remember just being like, oh, my – like, can they stop this – like, what's going on out there? And it, it was the first game of the year, so there's always little, you know – mess ups and mishaps and things you miss uh as a player so i didn't take it too seriously but there i was like uh uh-oh 
what's going on? I, I do remember that that guy actually ended up – that white receiver you're talking about actually ended up transferring – to Bama the next year and was like a pretty good player for them as a grad transfer. But oh Emmanuel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmanuel Mosley's yeah, Emmanuel Mosley's had a good career. Okay, so what about when it's your early time? I guess your first year starting and you're at Oklahoma and you got boys on your own offensive line just getting worked. I mean now that's tough. That that is that is tough. Um you don't see it as much when it's your own position or even on the offensive side of the ball. Like I, I said this to Brienne the other day, when I, when I look back on games, when I look back on, you know, different scenarios throughout a game, I can't remember the, the stands. I can't remember the people. I can't remember who was next to me at guard. I can't remember what, you know, exactly what uh yardage we got or didn't get i remember exactly what i was doing and it's a process of just like literally blocking every single thing out besides your job and it 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 literally made it to where like i don't remember the fans i don't remember it being loud i don't remember it being quiet like it's just exactly what's going so i knew that bad things were happening on the other side by the fact that we were going three and out and there were sacks, but I didn't see the sacks. I didn't see exactly what was happening. And I always felt really bad for Coleman. And honestly, my, the next year I felt bad for chance hall because he got thrown in the fire also in the Georgia game. And then his first start versus Alabama. And that's honestly the best I could example I could give you because I went up I, you know I told our offensive line coach I told our offensive coordinator I said do not give me any running back help give every running back chip to chance don't don't give me any leave me on an island slide the protection that way because it was Jack and chance right next to each other they're freshmen it's their first start and we got down towards the end of the game we were very close that's when I said it I was like look do like Put me on an island every single time and give them help because that is the only way we're going to keep Dobbs safe and be able to move the ball. And I was completely confident in myself. I had played the best game that I ever played versus Georgia the week before, and I stand by that. That's the best game I ever played and knew that if we wanted an opportunity that they needed help on that side. Now, it didn't happen. Because when you draw up plays, you need to run it back on certain sides and they need to go out into a certain flat. So sometimes I got the help and chances on an island and he got beat and sack fumble and they recovered it and took a couple knees and the game was over. I, so you and I have talked about that game a bunch. Um, that year, it was still one of the best offensive game plans I've seen. That Florida game, that that was a, a bad loss or just like a tough, heartbreaking loss. And then that Bama game, which was the exact same thing. I actually thought Chance and Jack both played well. I thought the board's play calling was incredible. I've always talked to you about how much I loved when you guys did the double pull guards. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, I thought that was so genius and then Bama even I remember texting you one time it was the national championship game it was about to be Bama and Clemson and they had um maybe Reggie Raglan or That's, Ruben yeah. Foster and yeah. they were like That's they asked them who the yeah and they asked who the best they played against all year offensively and they're like oh Tennessee like no no question so yeah, I, that, that film session could not have been, been fun for those guys. But, I mean, I thought they played well for true freshmen in SEC ball. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, the entire game they played pretty well. They're like – they're a holistic look at it. They played well, right. especially for being freshmen. But, it, like, once it got down to crunch time, the defensive linemen turn up a little bit. You know, they get, they get a little more anxious. They're trying to make a play even more – and it makes it hard. Like your job is harder. Like once it gets to crunch time, it is harder. You feel the pressure on you. And I, you know, I had had what 12 the year before, uh, 13. I had had, you know, 18 starts under my belt, uh, you know, 
two years previous of that of getting in on special teams and big packages and goal line stuff. So like I had experience over them and I just felt like I I needed to take a burden off their shoulders and I, I wasn't able to, which kind of sucked. Uh, Cause as the older guy in the room, that's what I wanted to do. That's who I wanted to be for like for them. Uh, and it, it's so funny. Like I, I, I wasn't even, that much older than these guys i've always been young for my grade but they still like called me grandpa curb and you know it took me like 20 minutes to stretch out in the field and like i felt like an old man when i was playing with them because they were just you know spry young young bucks yeah yeah no yeah i no, i remember that um like i said i thought they played well that georgia game man i guess it was leonard floyd that you went up against who you played super super well uh, he just got paid like a day ago again um i know I, it's I, a bit it's the biggest crap i've ever seen in my life that guy yeah Oh. Hey, it, it's, it's, it's easy to go rush with uh, Aaron Donald and Michael Brockers and some of these other guys he's playing with now in L.A. <laughs> They're literally triple teaming Aaron Donald. Yeah, it's pretty freaking easy when you're going against a tight end for you to get a sack. The guy has <laughs> the guy has no lead in his ass. He's like 215 pounds. Like you got your hands on him. It, it was it was done. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember. No, I remember you telling me about that. But no, I. It's just tough seeing an, another teammate, you know, like that. So, yeah. But, you know, anyways, um, as we go back into my glory days, uh, Alabama game, you know, we end up losing. Uh, I still don't think that loss was the same as some of our other regular season losses where it was just, you know, us not being ready to play. I think Alabama was a lot better team than the other losses that we have. So it does make me feel okay, especially since Alabama won the regular season championship and the tournament championship. They are a very good team. Excuse me, burping from the Diet Coke. Uh, (laughs) um, And I mean, they're a two seed that, I mean, they are a good team. They got they got that yeah. two seed. And, you know, okay, so we talked about this NCAA tournament. We get a five. We're the fifth seed. And looking up the teams that we have the potential to play, we are in the absolute worst position of any team in this bracket. Any, any team. So I'll, I'll say this. I haven't done a bracket yet and i haven't delved into it i made sure just to check what we had i'm gonna be honest i'm pretty happy with the five seed i literally thought we would be six seven eight probably in there and then so i'm happy with the seed but like this sounds bad because it's the beauty of march like anything happened but like if we just make it the sweet 16 i'll be happy because that means we get past oregon state i know nothing about oregon state except i guess they've won their last seven or eight games which it's never fun to play a hot team, but bro, if we have to play Oki State, I mean, we're not going to be able to guard Kane Cunningham or whatever his name is. About to be projected number one pick in the NBA, and he's just a stud. So, as a basketball fan, I love to watch us try to defend him if we beat Oregon State and get Oki State. But no, you're right. Um, Illinois is just on a different level. Um, they're the hot. They're what, by far the hottest team in the NCAA right now. They're very good. And I think that I think they're gonna win it all. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it'll be Gonzaga and them in the end, because I do think Gonzaga has a, a very easy road. They've beaten the number two, three, and four seed in their division. So I think they have a very easy road and those two will meet and Illinois will end up winning. So sorry to interrupt this great podcast, but we have another sponsor. It is eBay. So whether you are, you know, trying to get some rare dead stock or the latest releases in sneakers, eBay is the place to be. They're the original sneaker marketplace. They are the ones who know it all. Okay. So with eBay's authenticity guarantee, uh, your sneakers are meticulously inspected uh, by professionals. You know, 
they authenticate the box, they verify the logo, the stitching, and dozens of other things that go into it. Uh, you also get an authenticity guarantee tag. So with this tag, it includes a digital stamp of authenticity. So you, you know it's real. Uh, it also protects sellers with verified return process. And for the sneaker sellers out there, if you are selling sneakers, this is a place to go because eBay has eliminated selling fees for sneakers over $100, which is most sneakers nowadays. So, you know, making it free to sell all of them. So uh, go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. Uh, yeah, I mean, eBay, it's the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection. But I just want to explain this to you really quick. And for all the listeners out there, Illinois, the one seed on our side, won the Big Ten Championship. Drexel, the team that they're playing, the 16th seed, won the CAA Championship. Loyal Loyola, Chicago, with their... <laughs> yeah, boo. I was like, if they get freaking past Illinois and meet us in Sweet 16, I'm going to lose my mind. I can't stand uh, them. They won the uh, Mississippi Valley Championship. Uh, Georgia Tech, guess what? Came from behind, won the ACC Championship. <laughs> Oregon State uh, beat Baylor and won the Pac-12. Or No, no, no. Oklahoma State beat Baylor and won the Big 12 Championship. Oregon State uh, won the Pac-12 Championship. And Liberty won the Atlantic Sun Championship. Every team in our eight-team division besides us won their conference championship and are on at least a two-game winning streak. Wait, wait, wait. Are you sure Oklahoma State won the – I thought I thought Texas won the Big 12. No, 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 no. Hold on. I'm checking this right look, now. For our, fa- our, fans, our fans need to know. We can be the stat guy. Yeah, I'll be the stat guy. AK, I'm Googling on my other phone right now. <laughs> no, because I, I was looking up the teams on, like, the possibility of us playing them. I want to look, you know, their record, what, you know, what they did this season, and every single one of them, their no, last I, – No, I was – no, take – so Oklahoma State made it to the Big 12 championship, but they lost – because I remember watching this this past weekend in, in Texas won. But you're – you're right. Oklahoma State at least made it to the championship. Okay, the so they so they played Texas and Correct. lost. Correct, but it was a good game. Yes. Okay. Okay. So one one team. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't even make it to the championship. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it. Uh, I'm just like, oh, what a freaking Tennessee lineup that we get. Uh, yeah. And and it, it honestly makes me mad. I feel like you know you said you were happy with the fifth seed. I looked down just a few teams and see West Virginia in the three seed. They have an 18 and nine record Their, You know, some of their biggest wins are versus Texas tech, which I mean, Texas tech is like the 17 and 10 this year. They're like number 21 in the nation. So almost identical record. We're 18 and eight. They got bounced their first game in the, uh, in the champion, in their conference tournament. We made it to the semifinals. Why, why are they considered better than us? I, I, I just don't see it. I mean, we have a good win in Kansas on our record. Why can't – I mean, I know that it's been back and forth all season, but I don't know. I just feel like that three seed would have been amazing for us because all the teams on that lower division are – not on hot streaks. They didn't win their conference championships. They're some of them are on losing, like been losing in Houston. The number two seed is by far the worst two seed on this board. They really haven't played anybody throughout the entire season. And I'm just kind of pissed that we got Jip there. Wait till Houston like runs a table to the final four. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that's exactly no, but- what will happen because I like to put my foot in my mouth. West Virginia, though, you, you probably have an argument there. I, I I need to go back and kind of look at their overall – I don't know what their big wins are. But, listen, maybe I'm just down on Tennessee basketball this year because I did drink the Kool-Aid 
heading into this year. I really thought after we beat Missouri like we did, I was like, hello, final <laughs> four. <laughs> so, but anyway, it, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm still very fired up to see what happens. Yeah. I, I, hey, hope, hope is always, always up. I, I mean, I, I am always hopeful no matter what. I think we have the worst spot we could be in, but Dang it, when I watch these games, I'm going to be hooting and hollering. My wife's going to be pissed at me because I'm saying let's go 15 billion times while I'm watching. And, it, you know, I'm always going to be excited for it. I'm, I'm a homer. I'm a VFL. Like, that's – there's never going to be a time where I don't bleed orange. So, I, I'm excited. March is always, you know, one of the most fun months of the year. So, uh, sorry we couldn't give you all of our picks. Uh, you know, we're not necessarily bracketologists, but I definitely wanted to talk about that. Um, let's move on to some other news uh, surrounding the SEC. Uh, Rush Probst, which uh, used to be the head coach at Hoover, uh, you know, was part of the two a days on MTV, that TV show, comes out, says Alabama and Georgia both pay their players, that Georgia paid Nick Chubb like 18 or a th- like 180 grand to stay his last year at Georgia that Nick Saban goes through Bear Bryant's son that owns a bank to give money to players and huge allegations coming out of that. Now Rush Probst is seen as not such a great guy, so it's hard to take his word for it. Um, But it is, I mean, it's spicy, right? So, yeah, before I jump in this real quick, you what, what's your thoughts on it? What's your opinions on it? Um, I, I don't think it will end up mattering. I think it probably is true because I truly believe everyone cheats. I truly believe that every team is paying somebody, is doing something around the NCAA, is not following all the rules. Uh, and I just don't think you become that dominant without a little bit of cheating. But I think the defamation of character that Rush Probst has will prevent this from ever being anything. We will 100% dive into the cheating because that, I mean, you're an all SEC lineman for the University of Tennessee when you were there. That's, that's saying something that you firmly believe that like that you that you think that so we'll, we'll dive into that some other time i'll get the listeners really what they want after i pry and pry um no i i could care less like rush probes like whatever guy like you said I, nothing's gonna come from it i can't get my hopes up like bama's not gonna get any trouble georgia's not gonna get trouble in a weird way like i think georgia's the one that definitely has to cheat more bama it might be to a point where they probably maybe cheat some but like saving saving so who the heck knows like it he he has enough people that want to come there that's like hey you want to come here and be great win championships or like see see f and later because i got a couple other people that can come here maybe some of the big boys like the top three to five to eight to ten best players coming out every year maybe he cheats with them i don't know i wouldn't be surprised either way i i definitely think georgia probably has to which I'm so sick of Georgia because they haven't won a national championship since 1980. And yes, they have been some, they had obviously they have been more relevant than we have. They played a national championship game. They've been the SEC championship. But like you're not Bama, like you're not even Clemson. So like, stop, stop acting like you are, but yeah, could care less about rush probes. I, I don't know him. Like you said, just the stuff that I've read, obviously he's not a uh, stand up, stand up guy. I think he probably likes the, his name being tossed around and he probably likes the pub. So, but nothing's coming from it. Only people that the NCAA wants to get is us, our McDonald's bags and Bruce Pearl's barbecues back in the day. So. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, pretty tough Bruce Pearl fact there. Um, still hits the heart, but uh, I, yeah, I would agree. I, I don't necessarily think anything's going to happen from it. Um, I do think what you said Saban's probably fine. He probably doesn't need to cheat anymore. I mean, we saw the recruiting video that came out a couple weeks ago. 
of, you know, him selling Alabama. And it's like, yeah, it makes sense. You're going to play against the best. You're going to go to the NFL. You're going to win a championship. And you're going to learn some discipline while you're there. So why, why wouldn't you go there? Uh, gosh, but yeah, Georgia. Yep. I, I, I mean, I completely agree with everything you're saying. I don't think it'll be anything. I do think Georgia cheats. And who knows, maybe maybe Pruitt learned from uh from from Probes back in the day because he, he I, coach underneath yeah. him. Yeah. Hey, let me so first off, real quick, so that so the 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 fans know, hopefully in the summer when it's a little bit dead period, I'm gonna have you tell the story about when you went on your official visits because you said that you didn't like Saban and you thought he was a dick and just thought he was arrogant. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I can so, go into that now, but we can save it. No, let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it. Yeah, we'll save it. We'll save it. Um, so we are a Tennessee football podcast, so we have to talk about the news. Um, this is our segment of Big Orange Juice, telling juicy stories, talking about juicy topics. This one is a tough one. Uh, three players for the football team are arrested for drug possession. Uh, the story includes them breaking into a guy's apartment, uh, stealing some stuff out of his room. I'm guessing it was the actual drugs that they were arrested for and uh, assaulting the guy. So uh, Martavis French, Aaron Willis, and Isaac Washington, all three arrested. <sighs> I just – I don't know enough about other teams, but I really do wonder, does this happen to everyone else? Cause I feel like this happens to us a lot. There's always some guys that don't understand the position that they're in, how blessed they are to have a scholarship to get, to go to college, uh, get a college education. I, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of guys that, that play, they're the first people in their family to get a college education and they don't realize how that can set them up generally generationally moving forward. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, coming from someone like myself who loves, grew up loving sports, wanting to play major level college football or wanting to play in the NFL. Like everyone kind of has those dreams um, I was very fortunate, very blessed and was happy just to, just to be a walk on, you know, at Memphis and, and see that and get to do that. But you also see other people who, uh, won the genetic lottery type deal. Uh, you, you being one of them. I mean, you're, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, so you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. These yeah. freaking dinner plates. There you go. Are pretty nice those, to have those big uh, bear paws. Yeah. Yeah. So it's tough to see that. I'm like, dang, like, I wish these guys, like you said, knew the opportunity they, they have. Um, but, but I, I, I'll never judge them because I didn't grow up in their shoes. I didn't, I, I didn't grow up in that lifestyle. So um, ultimately I want, uh, you know, ultimately I really, really do want, want the best for those guys uh, as a fan. And we both know that if you're a pretty darn good player, you're probably going to get kept around. And if you're, not that great then you're probably going to be let shown the door much quicker than someone who is really good um and that's that's without even knowing the facts you know these guys could have been there smoking they said hey like f off like we're not paying you and then they took the rest of the weed and just said deuces and that guy's like no screw that i'm calling the cops or i guess technically they could have really busted down the door face covered stole stuff and left I don't know. I, I, I really hope that wasn't the actual case, but yeah. we're, we're going to find out um, real quick kind of how Hypel views these guys as players and views what they did. Um, I think it's probably I, – I guarantee he probably doesn't want to lose two potential good linebackers and a defensive lineman. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a huge loss at linebacker because we're already losing guys in the transfer portal, and it's – it is a very thin position for sure. So as a player, when you were on the team and you had stuff like this happen, did you ever have an opinion on it? Were you ever like, like, I wish these guys weren't idiots or were you just kind of like, 
How would you feel about it when, when a teammate did something like this? I guess it depended on who it was. And also I felt different once I was older um, because a guy we had mentioned in the last podcast, uh, Schmerschmick Schmodgers, uh, got away with some stuff during his time. And, uh, you know, Jansen Jackson got a- away with some stuff during his time because they were great players. And, I didn't quite understand the dynamic of it. Um, I was just trying to, you know, watch and learn and listen and see what happens. But once I got older, I saw it almost as if there was a guy who was younger than I was and did something stupid like that, you know, I wanted to be able to be there to help them, to coach them, to teach them. But I didn't feel bad for him. I was almost cynical and saying like, you screwed up, bro. Like you got to pay the pipe. Like it's all on you. You know, that's no one else's fault. That's your own fault. And I, I don't know if it was just being an older guy, understanding how blessed I was to be there and understanding that, you know, not everyone gets a chance to play in the sec. Not everyone gets a chance to play college football in general, and you can't take it for granted. And if someone is dumb enough to do that, that's on them. I, I mean, I guess that's I guess that's how I how I view it. Uh, I think people are, deserve second chances, but there should definitely be some kind of punishment for sure. If you're going into your real quick before we jump into the our stories, if you're about to be a redshirt senior. And you guys are preseason top 15 and your quarterback, a starting quarterback does something like this. Like say if Dobbs had done something, are you going to be like, no, he deserved to be punished like everyone else should or like, dang, I really don't want to have a crappy senior year. So I'm okay with like letting him do his punishment type stuff, but still playing. Hmm. I don't always think punishment is not playing. Obviously, that's the most fun that you can have. Uh, I think there should still be punishment. I would still want, you know, say it was Dallas, which is the last person that would ever, which is so funny, but say it was Dobbs, I would still think he deserves to be punished. That's, it would suck to not have him out in the field. But if I was in that team meeting and it was up to the players to decide the fate, I would vote a game suspension, maybe two and be serious about it because it's, it's a teaching moment. And honestly, I, I care more for the guys that I played with and, who they are as people than I ever would about winning. So I think, I think, yeah, I think I would, I would be on the side of punishment for sure. Gotcha. You got a story for us today? Yeah. So uh, pertains to this kind of stuff. Um, Back in my red shirt junior year, we uh, was in the middle of the summer having a party uh, I was 21 at this point, so no one get mad at me, okay? I was drinking beer, having a good time, uh, <laughs> house party with my friends, and <laughs> a lot of the football players were there. Uh, we were all hanging out, drinking, having a good time, and my sister was happened to be there, too. She's two years older than me. We've always been really close. She comes up to me and says, hey, do you see that guy over there in the backpack? Doesn't he play for you guys? It's like, yeah, he's he's a freshman. I think he just got here. It's like, he just tried to sell me weed. I I was like, what? He just tried to sell you weed? Like, (laughs) yeah, at this party. And talking about like a head shaking, like, what an 
idiot. Yeah, but 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. So the fans, so the people listening know, it wasn't like, hey, do you need this like bag or this diamond? He had a backpack with him that was filled with with weed. I'd never looked into his backpack, but for you to have a backpack at a party and you're going around to multiple people and asking if they want weed, I'm guessing you got a lot on you. <laughs> <laughs> so I go over to uh, some guys in his position group and some, you know, older guys. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. You need to talk to Buddy because he can't be doing that. He is a month into the two, maybe two months into this program. And he already has a connection in Knoxville to get a pound of weed so that he can sell it at a party. Like how in the heck, I, honestly, he's probably a better businessman than he is a football player. <laughs> right. I mean, to be able to get those connections in that short of time. Uh, but long story short guy ends up being kicked off the team for other stuff that happens. And who knows? I, I don't even remember. It could have been weed. Uh, yeah, but it just goes to show like some guys just really don't understand and, and can't get their heads around being in a new environment, having discipline and not you, you just can't do the shit you got away with in high school. You really right. can't. And, and that's over every spectrum. It's not just like doing illegal stuff of selling weed or partaking in weed. It's going to class, uh, practicing go into the weight room and working out like there's a ton of guys in high school that don't do that because they're the best player on their team and their coaches don't make them and they never go to class because they don't want to and they don't think it's important and it's a huge wake-up call once they get to college because coaches can just send you out the door you better be place. yeah if you're going to do that stuff in college you better be incredible like i'm talking first round draft pick incredible yeah, well, uh, I mean, there, there's been multiple guys that have gone to big time programs, done that kind of crap, go JUCO, then come back right. out. Cam Newton, the right. first overall pick, stole laptops at Florida. Right. Gets kicked out of Florida. JUCO goes back to Auburn, wins the Heisman, wins the national championship, first overall pick. And it's like, hey, yeah, sometimes you can get away with that stuff if you are that talented. Right. But not everybody's Cam Newton. Yeah, and so I know the guy that you're talking about, and just so the fans know, like, this wasn't – he wasn't going to probably ever be elite, but he was a three-star, I think, maybe, recruit. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, he could have every, every, helped. Every guy, every recruit that comes onto the team adds depth at first, right. which is something that every team needs is depth. And right. then as they progress through, like you get better and better and eventually you'll play. I mean, I, I you know, like you said, I think I got some God given ability uh, in size that other people don't have, but I, you know, I never saw myself as like a world breaker athleticism wise, or just like right. out of this world. Like Juwan James, the stuff that I saw him do on the practice field and the stuff that he got out of, in weird like body situations and been able to recover from I'd never seen before and knew that I was not that athletic. And right. I mean, that's the reason why he's still playing in the NFL and why he's a top tier tackle in the NFL, like in the NFL. Right. So, I, I mean, everyone has an opportunity to, to get to where they want to be. You don't have to be the four, the five star that everyone well, I was just, I was just making sure people knew that this wasn't some like random walk on selling weed that like he didn't matter if he was on the team or not. Like he, this guy was yeah. a legit. Yeah. Yeah. He was um, a legit recruit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for my big orange juice, I feel like such a lame telling the story because I don't want it to come across like that. I'm trying to be cool or that I care or, or any of that type stuff. But I do think that it's pretty entertaining and pretty funny and just happenstance. So, as you know, I've been living in Nashville for a while, moved back to Knoxville this summer, bought a house. Um, I have basically like my younger brother who lives with me. We're not actually uh, blood, but we've lived together for probably four years now. Um, 
I consider him a younger brother. So anyways, um, get to the point, he, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he has some buddies that he may or may not have grown up playing football with. And so one day I show up to my own home to these random cars and I walk in and there is someone who's about to be drafted in the NFL this upcoming year at my home to partake in some adult, um, well, I guess adult illegal activities. <laughs> so first I walk in, I'm like, dang, bro, like you look good. Like, obviously you, you've been putting the work in, like you look good. Like hope you have a nice senior year coming up. Like, be rooting for you and then they do their thing and i'm like i want to go down there and just be like i want to be the old head like lame dad and be like hey like don't be careful like you can't be doing that stuff around because if someone sees you you could get in trouble like you're gonna be having a pro day coming up you're gonna be doing these things like you literally can make millions so don't get caught being an idiot and then it's so that that was just funny but it was just like yeah, and so then, then we also had uh, another individual um, that was actually played for UT who was supposed to be a, a good help for us. Uh, he had an okay year, maybe not as good as he wanted to. Um, but he then also shows up because maybe the three of these people know each other for whatever reason, and he was doing the same thing. And I'm like, as a, as a fan, I'm like, oh, great, here we go. Now you're going to get caught. and now Back you're not, it up. Back you know, it up. I was like, now you're going to get caught. And now I'm not even going to see you on in Orange on Saturdays. Like, we need you. Come, like, pull your head up. But anyways, I just thought it was funny. And I'm like, I really did want to be a dad. And be like, hey, guys, like, you got a big opportunity out there. But anyways, Listen I will never hear, divulge. Listen here, Sonny. Listen yeah. here. I will never divulge the names, but it's just a small world. And I just had that funny feeling. I was like, man, if Tennessee fans – or college football fans were seeing what I was seeing, like it would go viral. Like people would be freaking out. Like the Knoxville news media would be just pubbing it. I mean, ESPN would be pubbing it like that. I mean, they're, they were that good of players. Well, so. uh, we do know nowadays that you can let out a picture of you inhaling a bong right before draft day and still end up signing a multi, multi million dollar contract like Laramie Tunzel did. Correct. Uh, so obviously your play is what matters more to the NFL, even though they, yeah. you know, want to keep testing for marijuana. Should I have been a dick and be like, Hey, I'm going to take a picture of you and I need some of that money when you get, when you get drafted. What's your, what's your signing bonus? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'll take 10%. Eight. Yeah. I'm going to need 10%. Oh, your agent gets three. I'm going to need 10. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> appreciate it yeah so uh, yeah that's a good story that's that's that is some juicy stuff um yeah, <laughs> yeah i do i do agree probably probably big frenzy um if we knew knew who it was all right well <laughs> reed i very much appreciate you being here uh like i said you add a lot to the show more than you know I always struggle talking to myself, uh, just looking straight into a camera, staring at a mic, trying to come up with interesting topics. And I always feel like you add a lot. You, you help me remember those stories that we just reminisced about uh, that, you know, Vol Nation might want to hear. And hopefully my mom has better reviews for you after this one. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm probably calling you as soon as this ends and being like, did she really say that? <laughs> Cause you threw me for a loop when you said that. Cause I told you when I started doing this, I was like, bro, these people do not want to hear from me. They want to hear from you. <laughs> I want you to be loose. I want you to be, I want to throw you for a loop. See how you react to it. Uh, but okay. I appreciate everybody coming out, uh, listening or watching on YouTube. Uh, please rate and subscribe on all your podcast platforms. Please subscribe and like on YouTube. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. You don't have to follow Reed because he's not a big deal. Uh, True. <laughs> you can also email me at uh, believeintennesseefootball at gmail.com for any questions 
uh, topics you want us to cover, or text and call at 865-322-9232, and I'll answer some of your questions. So uh, appreciate the following. You know, share with people. Let them know what I'm doing. Let them know that this is an amazing show. And as always, go balls.